You're watching UTV News. My name is Ina Kosinska. Good evening. A comprehensive package for deterring Russia is being developed by Ukraine together with its Western partners. According to Foreign Minister Dmitry Kuleba, it goes about political and diplomatic pressure, economic measures in case of expansion of aggression, as well as a list of specific needs to strengthen the armed forces of Ukraine. Dmitry Kuleba discussed joint opposition to hybrid threats from the Kremlin with NATO Secretary General Jens Stoltenberg during a recent meeting. Russia's aggression in both the diplomatic and the military spheres has increased significantly in recent weeks. Ukraine is already actively consolidating partners to counter hybrid threats. We, Ukrainian diplomats, strengthen security in three areas – allies, sanctions and weapons. That is, ensuring of political support for Ukraine from key Euro-Atlantic partners, increasing of diplomatic and sanctions pressure on the aggressor state, and reaching an agreement on the supply of additional weapons to our army. The United States continues monitoring Russia's actions along the border with Ukraine. This was stated by the U.S. Defense Secretary Lloyd Austin. According to him, the American side sees troubling behavior from Russia and cannot fully figure out Moscow's plans. That is why he calls on Russia to be more transparent about the buildup of the forces on the border of Ukraine and take steps to live up to the Minsk agreements. We continue to see troubling behavior from Russia. And you've highlighted two, uh, uh, two key issues there. First, the troop buildup near Ukraine and their recent anti-satellite test. And none of this, this activity is helpful to the security environment, and it, it causes us deep concern. And so we'll continue to call on Russia to act responsibly and be more transparent. Release all political prisoners, stop arrests and persecution of the Crimean Tatar people. Such requirements for Russia are spelled out in the draft resolution, the situation with human rights in the occupied Crimea. It was approved by the Third Committee of the UN General Assembly, and in December it should be finally approved. Besides, for the first time, the draft resolution mentions the Crimean platform as an instrument of consolidation of international efforts for the occupation of Crimea. We introduced a number of essential elements into the draft resolution on Crimea. We specifically call on the occupying power to supply fresh water resources to civil population, to stop repressions against indigenous people, to leave prohibitions of the activities of religious groups, to stop destructions of cultural and natural heritage, to ensure the safety of journalists and other media workers, to investigate enforced disappearances, to release political hostages. Ukraine will be an active participant in the Nord Stream 2 certification. This was stated by the European Commissioner for Energy, Kadri Simpson, at a meeting with Ukraine's Minister of Energy, Herman Halushenko, the press service of the Minister of Energy reports. Simpson noted that the European Commission is ready to consult with Ukraine on this issue. Thus, Kyiv will become an active participant in this certification process, not only politically, but also legally, the Minister of Energy emphasized. The parties also discussed issues of security of gas supplies to Europe and the energy crisis. We really appreciate the support of Ukraine from our European partners. Involvement of Ukraine in the preparation of the conclusion of the Commission on Certification of the Nord Stream 2 pipeline and in the European Risk Group confirms that our state is an equal partner of Europe in the sphere of energy. German Galushenko, Minister of Energy of Ukraine. The parliament has expanded powers of the border guards. In particular, it regulated the use of weapons and special equipment. Now border guards can use weapons to repel an attack on guarded objects, as well as detain attackers who committed a serious crime. They can also carry out a visual examination of people, belongings, vehicles, and a perform personal examination of detainees. They can also inspect and, if necessary, seize things that may be material evidence or cause harm to the life or health of people. Besides, the border guards will also be able to use weapons, including firearms, to protect the borders. 
This law is needed now. It was filed not as a reaction to the events in Belarus, but earlier. It will help us to balance the situation and respond to such incidences. More rights are provided, more opportunities there, for example. There is an opportunity to perform detentions at the border not involving the law enforcement officers, as well as carry out patrolling of the border. The border guards will be able to perform their functions, because earlier they had limited powers. You know that there were conflicts between the state authorities before we have settled all this at the legislative level. That is, they will be able to fully perform their functions. Former President of Ukraine Viktor Yanukovych faces life sentence for organizing mass shooting in the center of Kyiv in 2014. Office of the Prosecutor General announced completion of an eight years long investigation of murders on Maidan and named 10 key suspects. Who are they and how they will the prosecutors prove the suspects guilt? Our journalists know. An important day for all Ukrainians. Prosecutor General Irina Venediktova is sure of this. After almost eight years, the country learned the names of the main organizers of the bloody events of 2014. We are talking about the first president of Ukraine, Viktor Yanukovych, Minister of Internal Affairs Vitaly Zakharchenko, Deputy Interim Minister Viktor Tushnyak, Head of the Internal Affairs Department in Kyiv and the Kyiv region Valery Mazan, Commander of the Internal Troops of the Minister of Internal Affairs Serhii Shulyak, Commander of the Kyiv Berkut Detachment Serhii Kusyuk, Head of the Public Police Security in Kyiv Petro Fetchuk, Minister of Defense of Ukraine Pavlo Lebedev, Head of the Security Service Alexander Yakimenko, Deputy Head of the Service Volodymyr Totsky. Prosecutors stress actions of those people led to mass shootings of protesters in the center of Kyiv, including the death of 67 people. Among the articles incriminated to organizers are those that imply the life sentence. <laughs> They are suspected of unlawful hindering the organization and holding of rallies, the use of physical violence and, as a part of an organized group, organization of abuse of powers by officials accompanied by violence with the use of weapons and special means. The organization of premeditated murders posing threat to the lives of many people. As a part of an organized group, they are also suspected of attempting to intentionally kill two or more persons in a way dangerous to the lives of many people. And they are suspected of causing intentional grievous bodily harm committed in a manner that has the character of special torture. In addition, the investigators found out that coordination of actions to organize massacres and the so-called anti-terrorist operation on Maidan was carried out through special communications, including with Russian President Putin, with whom Yanukovych kept in touch. Prosecutors are confident that in this way the country's top officials oversaw the actions of the security forces on the independent square. These connections took place during the active phase of the anti-terrorist operation. For example, during the anti-terrorist operation, the Minister of Internal Affairs of Ukraine spoke with Minister Kolokolsev of the Minister of Internal Affairs of the Russian Federation. The same connections took place through the security service and the FSB lines. During this period, Putin and Yanukovych have had 12 talks, while the interior ministers had 11. Six criminal proceedings are being investigated against Viktor Yanukovych only. The total number of cases on crime during the Euromaidan protests now stands at several dozens. Restoring justice is of great importance for both the families of the victims of those events and for further interpretations of what has happened. It provides the impossibility of further manipulations on the topic of the Maidan, on who killed the protesters, who organized the shootings, on the topic of an alleged coup d'etat, as very often certain politicians like to speak on this issue. Only a legally significant point, which is a sentence, will make manipulations impossible. Upon completion of the investigation, the prosecutor's office will hand over all the materials to the suspect's lawyers for review and preparation for the upcoming trial. Reported by Vadim Kramer and Valery Bakus, UATV News. Together with this, Ukraine is going to seek extradition from Russia of ex-president Viktor Yanukovych and other persons suspected of organizing the shooting of protesters in the Independent Square in 2014. Fedor Vinslavsky, representative of the president of Ukraine in the Constitutional Court, told this. Even if the Russian Federation does not extradite them, then those people who have committed crimes will not be allowed to leave Russia. Because as soon as they leave the territory of Russia to try to use their assets in Europe, and I'm sure their assets, material and financial, remain in Europe, they will not be able to use them. Because thanks to our European partners, they will definitely be detained and delivered to Ukraine. The investigation will thoroughly examine the Belenkets materials on the operation of the Ukrainian special services. According to Ukraine's prosecutor general, the criminal proceedings in the so-called Wagner Gate case were initiated by a number of law enforcement agencies.
Later, all of them were merged into a single one, which was then directed to the State Investigations Bureau. To remind the Bellingcat Union of Journalists has published the results of its investigation of the detention of 30 persons in Belarus a year ago. The detained uh, were said to be mercenaries of the Russia's Wagner's private military company. Starting today, the Vinity region is in the red quarantine zone. Thus, the maximum restrictions are already in force in 18 regions and in the capital. Over the past day, more than 20 and a half thousand new cases of COVID-19 were registered in Ukraine. 752 people died from complications. The leaders in the spread of coronavirus are Dnipropetrovsk and Donetsk regions and Kyiv city. Almost 298,000 Ukrainians have been vaccinated against COVID-19 over the past day. Every year, about 20,000 children in Ukraine are born prematurely, and if earlier every second of them were doomed, now doctors save up to 90% of these babies. But the less the weight of newborn, the more pathologies one has. Specialists of the perinatal centers help to identify and defeat them at early stages. My colleagues have visited one of such centers on World Premature Today. My boy Makarchik was born on the 26th week. Olha's son was born three months earlier than expected. This came as a surprise to the family. The baby's weight was less than one and a half kilos, and for the fourth week now, Makar has been in intensive care in a special box. Mom comes to him every three hours to feed and just be with her son. I talk to him, saying that I love him very much. He opens his eyes to me. Well, he can feel that I'm already standing near him. Jana and her triplets have already been discharged from the intensive care. She has twin sons and a daughter. Weight of two children was within normal limits, about two and a half kilos. But Mark was a kilogram lighter. They were nursed. They were not immediately given to me. At the beginning, I saw them just on video. My husband shot it. Babies born prematurely are being nursed in Dnipro Perinatal Center for 10 years already. This is one hundred of those babies who've been cared for. Well, you see, these are four famous triplets. They have already entered the school this year. Those girls are famous for the fact that the first girl was born 38 days earlier than her two sisters. Every tenth baby in Ukraine is born prematurely, they say at the perinatal center. Such children need special approach and attention. Delivery is assisted by a large medical team, which includes pediatric anesthesiologists and neonatologists. The most vulnerable category are babies up to one and a half kilos. There were 67 such kids over the past nine months, and 89 percent of them survived. This is a very good figure even for the developed countries. At present in Dnipro, they accept mothers in labor not only from Dnipro city itself, but also from neighboring Luhansk and Donetsk regions. To help prematurely born babies even more, the perinatal center and the regional hospital have been merged. We get fairly good funding from the National Health Service of Ukraine. This is the path the state has taken today. This is the path following which we are able to provide almost all those children with the therapy needed. Doctors manage to take care even of very tiny babies whose birth weight was about 500 grams. Reported by Vadim Kramer and Natalia Husak, UATV News. Oleksandr Petrakov became the head coach of the national team. The Ukrainian Football Association signed a contract with him until the end of the next year. They said that in August Petrakov got the team in a difficult period of qualification, when it had three points in the hero sets after three matches. During this time, the national team has never lost, drew a duel uh, against the reigning world champion France and won the key victories of the national teams of Finland and Bosnia and Herzegovina. That's all for this hour. More updates on our official website, YouTube, Twitter and Facebook pages. Thank you for staying with the YouTube channel. Goodbye.